Welcome back. This is World Insight. I'm Tian Wei. The South American country Argentina, despite carrying out one of the most severe lockdowns in the world, has surpassed 100,000 COVID-19 deaths last month. The country has come to grips with the tragic deaths by ramping up its vaccination campaign. Recently, China's Sinopharm provided 7 million doses of vaccines to Argentina, with 24 million doses more to follow. Now the country has achieved a 50% vaccination rate with one COVID dose. Earlier, I spoke to Gustave Gerardo, a former consultant to the Ministry of Economy, Foreign Affairs and Agriculture of Argentina. Speaking of COVID-19's origin, he said China is seen as an easy target. It's the first country that notified the world about the coronavirus, not covering it up. Let's listen in. We know the Delta variant of uh, COVID-19 is uh, becoming the biggest challenge now for the world. How is the situation in your country? Well, the situation in Argentina is uh, getting harder, you know. Mm, it was easier at the start because the, the, the measures that the, our new government, because at that time my government, my government changed it in, at the end of 2019, the the virus uh, couldn't couldn't spread in my country at the first time but after that you know the 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 situation getting worse for everywhere around the world so uh, it was impossible for the resources of my country to sustain these conditions with the vaccines with the cooperation from china and russia also we are getting many many of uh, medicines for to, to sustain the situation. Mm -hmm. I hope, really, that uh, for the end of this 2021, we just arrive to the 90% of our population uh, covered with the, with the medicines. You know? yeah. Did you have the vaccines? Yes, I have the, the, the first doses of the Sputnik V, the, the first one, and we are in the, in, the, in the middle of the process to get the second one. In my case, in my personal case, maybe sign of form in the maybe next two weeks. I hope so. <laughs> Good for you and all the best to you and your family, of course. We see vaccines are very important commodities, but there's also debates about vaccines. Uh, there's uh, anti-science uh, discussions. How do you see all of the latest? Well, in this sense, uh, we suffer the same unconscious for many parts of the population, they spread the, the <clears throat> virus without any intention. Uh, get the vacuums and uh, please get the doses for everywhere that it's not a problem for the people. This is the only way that we can avoid the, the hundreds of murders every day, at least in my country, maybe at an average 400 murders per day. It's, it's a very huge number, for, and we are suffering a lot with it. On the other hand, you, you see the debate about the origin of uh, the virus, which is certainly, as we all understand in common sense, a science issue. It's already become a political issue. It's a problem that no se presenta por primera vez. Well, this is not the first time this problem appears. What happens is that it's a very propitious moment for the international debate to focus and aim its guns at an economy that much of the Western Hemisphere considers and has decided to consider as one of its enemies. And this is the People's Republic of China. But all scientific assessments have not been able to prove so far that the virus had its origin in the People's Republic of China. In fact, according to the scientific analyses that I have read, there is certain evidence that a history similar to COVID-19 manifested in other parts of Italy, also in Southeast Asia and in the United States itself, with people who before December 2019 showed physical symptoms similar to those who suffer from COVID, which manifested as a very strong flu, which have not been evaluated correctly because the patients also died, so it was not possible to know for sure what had been 
the origin of their discomfort. And it's a very propitious, very convenient moment for those who have China as a target that have the political objective to hold the progress by pointing it as the culprit of this situation. But, from my point of view, China has been able to demonstrate quickly that first, after opening all its institutions to the international assessment of the World Health Organization, its laboratories and its institutional framework, up to now, has not been found out the specific origin of the coronavirus. So at this moment, no one can be accused of being the origin of a genetic mutation, which in any case is as we blame Spain for having been the culprit of the Spanish flu 100 years ago, or blamed any African country for having been the origin of Ebola. It happens that, unfortunately, China is today occupying a very important place at the international level. Your opinion is very important and your voice is the voice of developing economies. So that has led to the People's Republic of China being singled out as the guilty economy because it is necessary to find a culprit when the problem becomes a political problem. Mm. Right. And there's also the politicization of the whole issue, from vaccination to distribution. It seems that we are making ourselves disappointed. Lo voy a decir en español, Valentina, para no meter la pata. In the case of my country and China, for many years they have maintained close cooperation on various topics of interest to both economies, and particularly since the beginning of this 21st century. On this occasion, luckily, it was no different, and the Argentine government highly values the cooperation scheme which that it developed with the People's Republic of China during the pandemic. Argentina, up to now, has been quite satisfied with the cooperation because it allows the country to see in a real and concrete situation how the cooperation above between the two governments that are working together is materialized so that the pandemic affects us as little as possible. Regarding the consequences, I understand that it is a very good opportunity for China to offer developing economies all its operational capacities to assist those of us who have less advantages and to demonstrate its action, that assistance is not empty words, and that this gesture and this attitude of the People's Republic of China differs remarkably from other economies that are also very powerful, which prioritize assisting their internal their domestic front exclusively without considering the needs of others. Because in my country, the government knows that no one can solve this problem alone. We all come out of this global problem together or no one comes out. I think that China has understood this and believes the same. Mr. Guiado, I understand your country its economy has been going through its ups and downs over the decades. You had your happy moments. You also had your very challenging times. As an advisor for the Ministry of uh, Economy, Foreign Affairs and Agriculture, how do you reflect upon those moments? What do you think are the biggest lessons and takeaways from those moments? Eh, historicamente, Argentina is a great provider of products agroalimenticios. Historically, Argentina is a great supplier of agri-food products, and there's a strong concentration of these food products in the owners of the capital. Every time my country, politics, has tried to disarm that historical situation that has been going on for more than 200 years, there has been an agreement between the military power and those who have the most money to overthrow democratic governments. This has happened in my country repeatedly, establishing dictatorships that have altered the democratic order. The crisis in my country have to do with Argentina selling what the world eats or the world uses for food. So those owners of these food always want the Argentine currency to devalue because they can thus charge much more money for the product they sell. The other side of the same coin is that the real wage in Argentina gets reduced to the fact that food increases its price. Argentina can 
then generate a strong dependence on growing through the dollar currency that comes in from new sales of our products abroad. We have to change the productive matrix in my country to make money come from other sectors that are not exclusively macro foods. That's where we are at right now. There are a lot of mechanisms around the world, multilateral mechanisms and projects. For example, the Belt and Road Initiative. There were suggestions in some media reports in Argentina about the interest coming from Argentina to participate into the BRI, which is about infrastructure building, connectivity, ESG, and now there's more sustainable development involvement in it. Tell me more about your thoughts about those potentials. My country has politically decided, at least to say, that it will be part of the Belt and Road Initiative that will adhere to the Politburo's political project. In turn, when they developed the new communication route, the initiative based on 5G, the Internet of Things and Artificial Intelligence, the communication mechanisms that can more closely link with Latin America with the People's Republic of China seem to be the beginning of a very powerful and close relationship, because today communication mechanisms bring borders closer and make that famous cultural distance much smaller. But over time, today in my country, the Chinese community is the fourth most important. The number of Chinese, of people with Chinese origin residing in my country is very large, and that has brought an empathy, a bond, a much greater knowledge of your culture, to the point that no longer this is a strange to us, and that an initiative such as the Belt and Road is already seen with other eyes that are much more receptive, positive and optimistic. To be more precise regarding what may eventually be a much closer collaboration between Chinese capitals, who together with Argentine capitals could come to my country to develop those things that China has a surplus, which are infrastructure, technology, and financing. Very interesting prospect you have just painted, uh, uh, because uh, there are a lot of discussions about what might be that combination, you know, when Argentina joining uh, Belt and Road Initiative and when China and Argentina could work closer than before? How do you see that? I understand. I understand. During the last 25 years, capitalism underwent an enormous transformation regarding the way of doing things. Now, global value chains are the ones that govern the way products are made. They are not made in one country, they are not only made in China, they are not only made in Argentina, but the production processes go through different countries. The People's Republic of China learn, gather this knowledge by participating in these global value chains first in those stages in which it could do so with its own resources very modest, very poor, which are very abundant labor, products of low technological composition. But as China learned, it began to know how to do it, how to have the idea, how to patent it, how to learn to innovate through science and technology policies created by national champions with indigenous innovation. Argentina can learn a lot from these mechanisms. Then China learns to market learns to distribute, and Chinese companies participate in the entire chain together with companies from all over the world. But the products are no longer made in one place. Transnational products come to Argentina, but they are sent from China. China is part of a global value chain, and the interdependence of capitals makes peace much more possible because many more interests are affected if there's no peace. Now it is convenient there are routes, airports, ports, infrastructure, because all this allows a more homogeneous benefit of all those participating in the production process. And that makes cooperation more possible, and that although we are far away, China and Argentina can work together in the joint production in the world of products for Argentina, for China, and for the rest of the world. And that's where I think there are very good prospects. Del proceso de producción.